Hi, I'm Sam from Project Foxtrot, and uh, we did a pedestrian autopilot. Uh, our brief was basically, we had to create a device that you could wear, that you could carry around with you, um, that would use inertial motion sensors to tell you where you were. Um, we're using an XMOS device as well uh, as a piece of equipment to process this. The idea behind inertial motion is um, you've got the three um, dimensions of accelerometer, um, and then you've got three dimensions of rotation as well. Um, using the rotation, you can sort of get your absolute uh, accelerations, and then using some form of extreme wizardry, you can conform the, convert this into your location on a map. Um, so our goals were sort of to create the algorithms on the XMOS that would uh, tell, really tell the device where you were at from these sensors. So obviously we had to connect the sensors up to the device. Um, then we had to connect the XMOS somehow to some other device which would display where you were, it would display the map and do any other kind of things we wanted to. So uh, here you can see we've got um, the spark fun are the actual sensors. Um, then that connects to the XMOS, which connects via Bluetooth to the Android, which is where we did our actual application. Um, so we did come across a few problems. Um, first of all, the phone we have, we could only put Android 1.6 on there, which doesn't actually have Bluetooth capability. So we weren't necessarily sure if we were going to be able to even send the data we wanted to. Uh, luckily, we found an open source library, which was quite convenient. Uh, another big problem, XMOS doesn't have floating point. And the kind of numbers we wanted to represent could really have benefited from that. Um, <laughs> Martin on our team ended up writing a fixed point library for us, which sort of did the job. Um, and then we have the sensors. There's just a huge amount of noise in there. Um, we did some amount of basic filtering, but to get better than we, what we really did is just beyond our level. Um, so what we really did, we actually made it all connect up eventually. <laughs> so uh, the, the Bluetooth does communicate between the devices. We can display a map. The map can find a path for you, um, and it can keep track of your location with uh, data coming from the sensors. So and a very important question, does it actually work? Well, sort of yes. We can read from the sensors. <laughs> we take 100 samples per second on the sensors. Um, and we group these up, and then twice per second, we actually send this to the phone. So yes, we can find your path and we can walk you along it if, if the sensors say you're walking along it. But essentially, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Even leaving our sensors still, we get an error of 0.2 meters per second squared without actually moving them. So you're just leaving them there. They think you're walking around. <laughs> so um, yeah, we can only measure in discrete steps as well with the rotation, um, which are a lot broader than what we'd like to measure in. Um, the gravity component, as it says, is quite, well, f imagine it like this. We're getting errors of 2 to 3 degrees. For every 0 0.05 degrees we get, we get 7.7 .7 meters of drift in 30 seconds. And that grows quadratically, which means that after a few minutes... <laughs> Thanks. 